This is part 4 of 4 of an old Nick Faldo VHS golf lesson. If you missed part 1, 2, or 3, I'll put links in the description. This video is on the short game and putting. Enjoy! The 6th green at Valderrama is a beautiful par 3. This is an ideal spot to show you some chipping and bunker shots around the green. Well, what did you think of those, Dave? Well, the technique looks very, relatively simple there, Nick, and uh, obviously you've got a good pattern going to the shot there, and must be a lot of feel involved in these shots. Yeah, I actually try to get my right hand as the feel club. I use my left as just to guide it through the, the stroke, but you get the feel with the right hand almost as if you're feeling the distance, rolling a ball towards the hole. Luckily, I can chip them better than that. <laughs> Do you uh, change clubs, or do you tend to stick with one club, Nick? Well, we're about 20 uh, yards or so from the pin here, and I think the most important thing that I try to do is get the ball onto the green in those first couple of yards and then get it rolling like a putt. I almost read it like a putt. You know, I stand behind, picture the shot, I get the break, and, the, and my target area is, is here, just a yard or so onto the green. And, you know, I move it a little bit back in the stance and work very much with just hands and arms and feel it forward. So we're just trying to get it on a yard or so. There we go. Yes, the ball really hugs the green and rolls up, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think as we, as we work closer, as we get closer to the pin, we can change club, and then it really does become feel. You've got to come up, picture the shot. You've got to see your lie, uh, be able to get the, the club behind the ball nicely. Obviously, if we've got a lot of grass. We need to go for shorter irons. We use eight irons and wedges, and and then we can hit down on it a little bit more. But on a longer shot like this, very much a feel shot in the right hand. Very much like a long putt. OK, so we've now moved to the back of the green. We're only 15, 18 feet from the hole. Yeah, I mean, we hit a good shot in and we've just gone off the back of the green. And this is a shot that a lot of amateurs are, are afraid of because really all we're trying to achieve is a simple little stroke backwards and forwards, throw the ball onto the green, we're downhill to the hole and we just want to let it roll. Now one thing I've used over the last couple of years, I've, I actually use my putter grip. And I think this helps me because all I'm trying to achieve is a little stroke backwards and forwards. I'm not trying to help it at all with my wrists and loft it onto the, to the green. Very much a pendulum type stroke then. Yeah, we work very much with setting this angle with the arms and the shoulders and keeping that all in one unit going backwards and forwards. Move the ball quite a long way back. I've got a nine iron here. As I said, all I'm trying to do is just loft it a couple of yards onto the green. There we go. It's a very dead shot, isn't it? It doesn't roll much. Yeah, we're trying to just put enough hit. By changing your grip, that helps because you, you've reduced this little bit of wrist action. You know, if you come out too too much wrist action, you're going to hit it too hard. So with the dead wrists, we can get a nice... See, I can hit that quite firm, and the ball's only gone a couple of feet past the hole. Exactly. Now, you're using a nine iron here, are you, Nick? That's right. I think you can, again, feel the shot. We're going downhill. Obviously, uphill, you can go quite as low as even a six iron. Obviously, if you're just trying to get it to run that one yard and then up the hill. Let's try and knock one in for you. Nearly. This is the shot that obviously the pros are looking to hold, aren't they? Yeah, I think they, they certainly don't want to feel they're going to ever drop a shot from this position. They, they, they're only 80 feet from the hole. And with a bit of that, we'll get one in. There we go. Very good. This is part of the game that a lot of amateurs are very scared of. David, let's get you in here and explain the technique of bunker play. 
Well, you certainly made those look easy, Nick, and we'll see if we can do that for the viewers. First of all, I think it's probably a good idea to describe the sand wedge there, because many golfers you yeah. know, think they can get away with a, a poor sand wedge, but you find most of the pros are very particular about the club that they use. I think the importance is, is getting the right amount of bounce. You know, this is how measured how the, the bottom of the leading edge is below, sorry, the bottom of the back edge is below the leading edge. And this, of course, when you strike the sand, enables you to hit down on the ball and then the club will lift itself out of the sand for you. You don't want anything that's too sharp where the, the club just keeps going down. Right. Yes, I think it's important to uh, understand the fact that this is really the only shot in golf you don't actually have to hit the ball. The ball is riding out on that's the right. sand. You use the sand as a buffer and, you, and that's how we get our spin. Right. And it's really not as scary as most people make it out to be. Right then. Well, let's, uh, let's set up to it here. Certainly, the first thing you're going to do is set yourself a little bit open. You can see the way Nick sets up there. He's got his feet, his knees and his hips and his shoulders aimed probably about 30 degrees left of the flag for this length shot, which is probably about uh, 40 feet. He's placing the ball just forward of it in his stance there. There we go. Let's draw a line. Sort of. There we go. And I'll just draw a line in this direction so you can see where the ball is positioned in relation to his feet and how open he is standing. Now the important thing in setting up to the setting up to the ball is to grip the club correctly. When Nick grips the club there, you'll notice first of all the face is open, but he actually opens the face and then grips it. It's very important that you must not, under any circumstance, just open the club face, otherwise it'll return closed. So the club face has to be opened initially and then the hands placed on the club. Okay. So the club face is set slightly open. In fact, the club face almost looks slightly to the right of the of the target of the flag. Now Nick's feet are just approximately a little narrower than his shoulders. Now, as he swings the club back, we've, we've assumed he's buried his feet in for good balance. Yep. As he swings the club back, you can see the wrists do hinge, and he is not attempting to swing the club outside here. He's swinging the club on the line of his body. Now, we'll notice as, we swing, as he swings the club back, the wrists have hinged fully, and he's in a position where he can now simply allow his hands and arms to release through the ball there. So he's going to look a couple of inches behind the ball there, keeping his eyes focused on that spot rather than the ball. And we'll see uh, the full flowing motion of his swing here. Yeah, it's important that we, we keep the extension. So many amateurs hit down and expect just the explosion to send it out. We're not trying to hit a lot of sand. I'm trying to enter a couple of two inches behind the ball and come out probably two or three inches. So I certainly don't want to go deeper than that. You'll notice too when Nick plays this shot how well he stays down. The flex in his knees stays very, very constant. So we do not want to stand up on the shot at all through the ball, otherwise this is where the blade shots come from. So Nick can get fairly aggressive with this shot as well, but as long as he makes contact with the sand and keeps the club accelerating through, he is certainly not going to hit the ball too far. I also find that Keeping your, keeping your base still. If you use too much leg action, if you try to help the ball out with too much leg action, you know, you've moved your, your center forward and that's going to cause you to thin it. So keep that right knee firm in, in that one position and really just use your hands to pull the club through the ball. There we go. After the relative straightforward bunker shot, we now have a variety of lies to show you. And we start off with the uphill lie, where the problem we have faced here is really we have a wall of sand in front of us. So, A, number one rule is we're going to have to hit the ball a lot harder. We won't need quite so much an open face because the ball is already on the upslope, so we're not going to have too much problem in getting the ball up. And really, we don't want to hit too far behind it either because we're going to have to take a lot of sand and we're going to have to full, pull through the shot and be very aggressive on this one. So let's see how we can play this. Same setup and everything, a little bit squarer on my club face and the club is going to be entering the sand on a sort of a level basis. I, I'm not going to try and help it up at all. I've got to hit into the sand and blast a lot of sand away and send the ball up.
just to repeat this shot once more. Remember, I've got this wall of sand in front of me. I don't need to release the club at all. I can hit it in quite firm, holding this left wrist solid. OK, I'm now in the back of the bunker on a, on a downslope, as you can see, a very different problem to the, the upslope that we faced before. This time, as you can see, I've got to try and get my body into the same angle as the, as the lie. So I have to get myself well forward and my shoulders down a little bit because what I'm trying to do is chase the club through after the ball, keeping it down. If I'm back on the same normal level, as you can see, the club will enter right in the back of the ball and you'll probably thin it out. Again, the club, the ball is rather going to come out a lot lower and run. As we saw with the uphill shot, that comes out a lot higher and, and will always stop. So again, I, I'm opening myself up. The club face is on target and I want to pick it up a little bit more this time because invariably you're going to have the back bank in front of you. So pick him up and go through. Keep your head down all the time and let's follow through after this one. Stay up there, ball. The amateur's nightmare. The plug lie. Now it really isn't as difficult as you think. And I, with a lot of amateurs I've watched play, and you certainly don't have to go in there as if you're trying to kill snakes. Really, all you need to do is have a short, sharp thump through the sand. And on this occasion, you don't need to follow through. What we're trying to do, depending on the length of the shot, on a shorter one, we can have the club face open. And all we're trying to do is have a nice thump going down through the sand. And as you can see, I'm just trying to keep that and just remove that sand from in front of me. The stance is very similar just a little bit more weight on the, f the left foot. We can set the club a little bit more on the backswing because we're trying to get down steep into the ball. Again, we go in probably two inches behind and then down and through. And you stay there. If you keep your eyes there, don't lift up, trying to help it up in any way. Just stay down and pop it out. The problem is plug lie again. If I require to make the ball run further, imagine it's going to go past the pin this time. All I simply have to do is from that original club face position is just to close it a little bit, back to square in fact. And again, there's the same downward stroke and popping it through and it should run a lot further. We've covered the real basics of chipping and bunker shots. As you can imagine, there are hundreds. The, the variation is enormous. Let me show you how I practice. Now, wherever they lie, let's go and play them. Easy one at last. There we go. Well, that'll be a nice one to win the Volvo Masters, Nick. Oh, so I hope I can do it as easy as that. Let's talk a little bit about padding, shall we? Yeah. This, really, we want to work on the basics and give everybody a, a good idea of how to get a simple, repetitive stroke. Exactly. So we start from, I think, just from three feet to give you the right picture of what we're trying to achieve. And that's a nice pendulum action with the shoulders and the arms nicely relaxed, forming this angle where we can keep the club just going backwards and forwards on line. There we go, put one there. I want to just take him back and through. Simple as that, on target. Please you have your bit. eyes in relation to the ball, Nick. Well, I think uh, a simple exercise to do is to uh, take your address, get yourself comfortable over the... Give you another ball here. 
Well, I'll use, I'll use this one here, and I'll pop it right up on the bridge of my nose, and if I release it, there we go. That's where he landed. And that's directly over your eye line, both vertically and in between your vision as well. So that's a great indication of, and a nice easy tip to get you positioned every time on the putts. Most people uh, really are a little tentative and as they come coming through they start to follow and they start to peep at the hole. If you can pick a, a small target, a little speck behind, uh, behind the ball and as you go through you keep your eyes on that target all the time and you can see how well the club head then goes through to your target. This is one little drill you can do quite simply. Six tees placed wider than your putter head and the idea is just to give you a guideline of coming back and through the ball correctly. If obviously if I bring it in too far inside I'm going to hit this tee and I'll be thrown off line. So I want to go back and through keeping the putter head nice and low and slow and also a good tip is to whatever distance you go back you also go through. This will keep you accelerating through the ball. And a couple more. You got anything to add to that, David? No, I think it's very important that people understand that on these little pats there, the putter certainly does work pretty much straight back and through, but as we'll see when we get into the longer pats, the putter does tend to work a little inside. Well, this is another little effective drill that we use, Nick. Let me just place this shaft under your armpits here. Stab me. There we go. All right, now what this really indicates is how the shoulders work in the swing. You know, we find in many cases, golfers tend to take the putter back with the shoulders and move them in an incorrect fashion, especially going through the putt, if we can just illustrate this, Nick, if you can swing it back for me, and as they swing through, a lot of this happens. So very important to get the feeling that the left shoulder is going down and up. There we go, very much like a pendulum. You can see the motion here. So this is a very effective drill, and uh, you can either use just a plain shaft or, say, a two or a three iron to help you to do this. Now, Nick's just gonna practice putting to a tee, which brings to mind that this is an important Thing to work on. When you're working on your technique, don't worry about the hole. Just work on putting to a tee. Then one doesn't get too frustrated with missing the putt. You put all your concentration into the technique. There we go. Very easy. That promotes a very good shoulder motion. Well, without a doubt, there are many individual putting styles, but the thing that all great putters have in common is feel. And this is one drill that we've developed to help you to get the feel. Simply, we put some tees out at 10-foot intervals, and simply by putting to each tee, it helps it develop the feel that you need in order to hit the putt a certain distance. Yeah, we're really not worried about direction too much. It's really tr trying to obtain the feel, and you just putt at these at random. And it's uh, by doing it just once, it teaches you a little bit of muscle memory and certainly a lot of feel. Another simple way of doing it is to putt them one-handed. We recommend you, you use your right hand as, as this really is your feel hand. Your left is your, really your guiding hand. And again, you can just let this flow nice and freely and send them down to whichever tee you wish. And then one more little idea, which is, which is very good, is once we've got our direction, after you've taken your aim, take a good look at where the tee is and then shut your eyes and remember that and hit it through to the tee. Using your right hand again to feel the, the putter going through to the target. Do you feel your putter grip very light on the club, Nick? Yeah, I, I, uh, I use a slightly overlapping grip, but I try to keep as much pressure out of it as possible. Can I just pull it out of your hands there and you see? Go. There we go. You see, most people tend to strangle the putter, thereby losing feel. Gripping yeah. it nice and lightly really gives you the sensation of the putter head, doesn't it? That's right. You want to spend a little time just feeling your putter head. On your practice stroke, you know, all you're doing is feeling the weight of the putt and feeling the putter head. And then we come back into the putt and let it go nice and freely through to the hole. That was a better one. That's it for part four in the series. But I'm adding a bonus video on specialty shots next. I'm too lazy to go back and call it part five now, so we are calling it a bonus. Watch for that shortly or see the link here if it is done. Thanks for watching.